Well, hello plant lovers. It is Australian dendrobium time. Ah, and the room is full of the heady fragrance of these glorious orchids. Now, if you're new here, I try to grow, try being the operative word, cold, cool, intermediate orchids here in Melbourne, Australia without any equipment. So no greenhouses, grow lights, heating, humidifier, just me and them inside or outside, or we don't play at all. And so plant lovers, if that sounds like your bag, do hit subscribe. I post every week on a Friday, the ramblings of an amateur, but they might help you in your orchid journey. Who knows? And today's orchid journey is quite a journey. It's all about Australian dendrobiums and particularly dendrobium kingianum types, hybrids, forms, varieties thereof. And it's actually a very special video because it's also an orchid rescue video. Although it's not actually mine, um, an SOS went out from a friend of mine. Anyway, let's not get into it too soon because we would need to do some homework before we get into the main body of the video, which is gonna be a Dendrobium kingianum rescue and it's an epic specimen too. But firstly, very early spring here in Melbourne and you can see I've got a lot of things in bloom here. Now, this one here is probably as close to the species kingianum type that you could get quite a small flower as you can see, not many on the stem and quite sort of long and straggly, but also quite small. Then you can see around here, we've got all manner of hybrids, which will be a mix of maybe two or three other species. So Speciosum, um, Kingianum delicatum, which is a natural hybrid between Kingianum and Speciosum, but that is also part of the mix. So there can be two, three, four hybrid ancestors to some of these amazing plants that we're getting now in the market. Amazing blooms. So larger flowers, more flowers on the spike. Um, in some cases, frequent blooming during the year. Fragrance, color, all sorts of wonderful things. Spots, stripes, you name it, it's being hybridized. But what we're looking at today is kind of the classic Kingianum. So sort of close to the original as possible. But what is that original now? Just so happens I've got some wonderful books here. Let's just see what they say about the Australian Dendrobium kingianum. A new book for me, which is Growing Orchids, uh, book four, The Australasian Families by J. N. Rentoul. Can you see that? This is a whole series of books about orchids from around the world, actually. This one just happens, let me stop the light shining. This one just happens to be the Australian one. Very interesting, quite academic, a bit sciencey, but you know, who doesn't love a bit of science? But quite interesting about Dendrobium kingianum because there is a little bit of, um, not mystery, but I guess mixed messaging about just what it is. Grows best on the eastern or southeastern aspects of the ridges of the Great Dividing Range. That's the range of mountains that uh, runs up the east coast of Australia. This is the real puzzle of the Australian section of the genus because of its radical variability, both morphologically and in its habitat. Although there are several recognized varieties, it is best to disregard them because of overlapping types i.e. don't get hung up on what you've got. It is almost exclusively lithophytic and with flowers principally pink to rose colored. Ta-da! There is also an albino form and the other extreme deeper red purple clones. Now I've actually got a tiny white one which I did make a video about but I think I've got a picture, I'll drop that in. Now this bit is interesting. While some of the Australian dendrobiums seldom if ever produce adventitious or aerial growth, which is another word for describing keikis, Dendrobium kingianum possesses the characteristic to an abnormal degree with plants occasionally producing such growths on every pseudobulb instead of flowering like normal clones. Hmm, just so happens I knocked this one off my plant and true enough, I think the closer you get to the kingianum species in your plant, the more vigorous it keikis all the way up. So even if it is getting the right conditions, the right sun and the right water, it's still keikis like there's no tomorrow, which is great because even that one with almost no roots will survive. You just shove them in a pot with some out of the bag orchid mix and this will produce very quickly a little colony of plants and it will flower in the first or second year. Now this is an interesting little tidbit. In cultivation, Dendrobium kingianum has the happy facility of adapting to pot culture in ordinary cymbidium mixes. And I actually use an out of the bag mix, which is basically a cymbidium mix. So there you go, I'm being validated. There is a need for constant air movement, preferably fresh. So there we are. What we've established is Dendrobium kingianum is very variable. The colors, the flowers can vary in color, the plant can vary in size, and it is incredibly prone to produce keikis even if it's in the optimum conditions. So there we are. Good things to know, which I didn't know until 
just then. Except the fact that mine always has produced cakeys and sometimes I've just thought, mm, it's just bad care on my behalf. But no, now I can take myself off the hook, off the cakey hook. Now, Orchids of Australia by W.H. Nichols, a book that I have frequently shared with you because it is, look at it, I mean, it's a definitive book. Basically says the same thing, but interestingly, Dendrobium kingianum grows exclusively and usually in extensive mats on cliff faces or in rock crevices and is often remarkably abundant in the vicinity of waterfalls. So you can go chasing waterfalls looking for Dendrobium kingianum. The orchid forms young plants from the buds at the apex of the pseudobulb, which, when mature, fall to the ground and establish themselves independently. There we go. And the species is complex and extremely variable in growth and flower color. And there is actually an illustration to show you just how variable the flower types are. There you go. You can see all the different forms there from basically white to a, a deep rosy pink and everything in between. So there we are. We've established quite a few things about Dendrobium kingianum, including the cakeying of it, which is a relief to find out it's a normal behavior. Right, now without further ado then, let us step back in time to autumn when my friend bought an enormous pot, a very mature specimen of Dendrobium kingianum at an auction. And weirdly here in Melbourne, when there are house clearance auctions, there are often potted plants that came from the terraces or the balconies of some of these houses. Not often, but you can find incredible tree ferns, stag ferns, and often orchids. So that's where this one came from. Let's go and have a look at it the week that my friend bought it. So this is the specimen my friend uh, has recently bought at auction and was asking me about. It's in a massive pot, incredibly heavy. So at this point, I would say it's kind of hard to know exactly what it is, but it probably is a Dendrobium kingianum hybrid, but it could also be Dendrobium delicatum, which I have, which is a natural occurring hybrid between Dendrobium speciosum and Dendrobium kingianum. So generally those canes are a lot taller, the flower spikes are a lot longer, and the flowers are a little bigger and quite fragrant and a very, very sort of pale lilac white. Anyway, I'll link the video that I've made about both delicatum and kingianum and speciosum. It's definitely not speciosum, but it's probably kingianum or a hybrid. There is, there is sort of a bit of evidence of flowering, but actually not that much, which is surprising. So a plant that's kind of been, a, you know, left to its own devices for a bit, you would have imagined there's more sign of flowering. So I would think that this has perhaps not been in an optimal space for light particularly. And what we can see is like here, for example, a huge amount of cakeys on a lot of the cane. So once again, would suggest that it's sort of been in a position where it's kind of fighting for its life. Now, what you should also really be doing is just taking off all of these keikis and literally you can just pull them off and pop them up. Now, a plant like this is going to have a lot of keikis because it's just, oh look, there's a very <laughs> unfortunate one there. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about whether or not these are going to propagate. You will always be able to get new plants, but anyway. I would just collect all the keikis and pop them up all in one pot with out of the bag or good mix and just pop them all together quite densely in a pot and just see which ones make a break for it. If they've got roots and you see this has got active growing tips, this will be fine. My friend's question was, should she repot it or should she leave it where it is? And I said, well, realistically, you could kind of do either because these Australian, whether it's a kingianum or delicatum, doesn't really matter. They both come from an environment whereby they are very constrained. So growing them in pot culture, they want to be really basically pot bound and they thrive in those conditions. So if you look at this one, there's actually still plenty of room around the edge of this pot for the plant to send out new growths and, and to fill up. And on the other side of the plant, which I'll show you, you can see that the matter sort of dead roots and material has started to build up and the plant is kind of almost lifting itself out of the pot. Now, I made a short about a cymbidium that I saw in the Sydney Botanic Gardens, which I'll link, and that was in a beautiful 19th century urn, so quite shallow, and it must have been planted many, many decades ago, and that plant over time has literally, is growing up on top of the pot, so all of its decaying matter and roots and old pseudobulbs have all basically sort of decomposed and been grown on and through as the plant grows up on top of basically <laughs> the rotting remains of its past self. So realistically, you could just leave this plant to do the same thing. If you were, and if my friend chooses to leave it in this pot, what I might try and do is just have a little root about 
and see if you can't get a little bit more fresh, and I would use out of the bag orchid mix into the pot and a little bit of slow release fertilizer. And then just leave it in a prime spot so where it's getting plenty of sunlight, but afternoon, a little bit of afternoon protection from fierce sun. Otherwise, really great in Melbourne outside all year, and it'll be happy as Larry in this pot. But what I would definitely do though, is remove all of the dead canes. So the thing is about Dendrobium kingianum, speciosum and delicatum, and many of the other Australian dendrobiums, is that they can rebloom. They do rebloom from the same cane. So you really don't want to trim them off. But what you can see down here, actually I'm gonna trim this one off to show you more closely. So you can see that one, it's very desiccated and straw-like. That's never gonna bloom again. That plant lovers is a dead cane. So if my friend chooses to keep this specimen in the pot, all I would do is just go around and trim out a lot of these old dead canes from as close to the base as you can and just tidy up the plant that way. And then, as I said, maybe just try and refresh some of the potting mix, put in a little bit of slow release fertilizer and Bob's your uncle. However, I think what my friend is going to do also to help her move it, it's got to go from where it is now down into the city, which is about an hour and a half's drive and quite hard to move this plant. So I think what she's going to do is take it out, clean up the plant, put it in a temporary plastic pot, move the whole thing down to its final resting place and then repot it in this fabulous old terracotta pot. So it is going to go through sort of two stages. So what we might do is follow up the progress of this orchid when it gets to be repotted back down in Melbourne. But for the meantime, I'm just going to go around and just trim off old canes and sort of tidy up the plant a bit. So until next time, let's see what this plant is doing in a few months time. So there you go, it's a beautiful day too. And you can see that plant very, very dense. And as that book refers, they do form quite a dense mat because the keikis will often fall off or they'll just keep growing and bloom while still on the connected to the cane that it came from. So they do have this quite extraordinary growth habit. So my friend then decided she was gonna keep the pot that it came in, but take the plant out, refresh the medium, and maybe thin out the plant a little bit and then pop it back in the same pot. So we actually did that last week. So let's go and have a look at that footage now. Well, plant lovers, remember we came across this fantastic Dendrobium kingianum sort of hybrid that a friend of mine had bought an auction in a massive pot, overgrown and caking like the snow tomorrow. Well, here it is now. It's in Melbourne uh, and it is a beautiful, it's the first day of spring actually, the sun is shining and it's bloomed. Oh, and the fragrance is actually quite overwhelming just being here, it's stunning. So my friend took it out of the pot uh, to get out all the medium and just get a sense of the plant. And she's actually just left it in this seed tray for quite a while uh, with no water and no care in full sun and as you can see it is alive and thriving and flowering just goes to show how tough these orchids are and that they do love full sun so what we're going to do today though is actually pot it back in the pot that it was bought in with a, a refresher of some out of the bag orchid mix which i'll show you in a minute so i think we should just get on with that okay so we're just going to fill the pot about a third full with out of the bag orchid mix, which I know some people are horrified at, but, and I'm just gonna get a handful and show you. There you go. So you see, it's quite gritty, but there is quite a bit of bark in there, and it is perfect for Australian native orchids. Great, okay. And the magic ingredient, a little bit of mycorrhizal fungi, because we all need more fungi in our lives. And now putting the monstrous plant, do you need a hand? <laughs> oh, let me get rid of that. There we go. That's great. Look at that. What a beast. Okay, so it actually fitted perfectly back in, which is not surprising because it did come out of there. And you can see, basically, it's just sort of sitting on the surface of that um, potting mix layer. And the roots aren't gonna go very deep, um, but it is gonna love life and have more opportunity to develop its root system. So, ah, oh, 
the fragrance is absolutely beautiful. So what we're just gonna do now is just backfill the surface just a little bit with a little layer of that out of the bag potting mix. And this baby is good to go. We'll give it a good dousing with um, water and I would do a little seaweed solution uh, just to settle it in. And there it is, loving life to the full. It's not the best time of year to repot, but you know what, these things are so tough, it really doesn't matter. So we're just gonna top dress it and then we're done. And so amazing that that plant had survived literally just sitting on a plastic tray. So no medium and not being watered. It was just surviving in the ambient moisture and light. So there's another little sentence from this book which was fascinating in regards to that. The orchid is now almost totally lithophytic. Some may see it as xerophytic, which means it can survive on nothing. Literally just a tangled mass of its own self so it doesn't even need anything to cling to and I must say that I too have rescued a large Dendrobium kingianum from my late mother-in-law uh, who I never met and her orchids had just been left for about 18 years the orchid house had collapsed they were on their side they were in full sun only getting occasional rain and the kingianum was basically just in a pot with no medium it had been whatever washed out or fallen out or dried out and fell out and it was still alive and it was still blooming and had caked like there's no tomorrow. So it was forming one of those mats with no medium, as though it was, who knows, on a rocky surface out in the bush somewhere. So fascinating, really tough plant. So I didn't know a lot of those things about Kingianum, so I'm really pleased to have done a little bit of a deep dive and found out more about it. Now, that point about free air movement, this uh, specimen of mine, I actually had in too much shade. It was in the perfect spot, but then it got overcrowded by other things. We're in a rental, I'm squeezing a lot of things in until we can move. So there's a lot of sort of fungal damage to some of the leaves because it wasn't getting enough air movement. It was quite enclosed, quite shaded. So it struggled to bloom and the leaves aren't in great condition. Now the good thing is um, putting it back in great light and with great air movement, that fungal problem is no longer there. But these leaves last a long time, and so I'm gonna be forever reminded. It'd probably take another two or three years for those canes to become deciduous, die, and all the new ones to replace it. So, like many orchids, you are reminded of your failures for quite some years to come if you do mismanage the leaves. So there we are, plant lovers, Dendrobium kingianum. And it's just such a great time of year to have all these plants in bloom. I am so looking forward to the day when I can have all of mine sort of massed together like Dan's Sarcochylus that we saw in a previous video and they'll all be in bloom virtually at the same time so it'll be a great sight to see. The other thing is the fragrance is really delicious. It's a really light, almost hyacinthy fragrance actually, really delicious and the flowers don't last long but when you do bring them into a room it will fill the room with fragrance. An amazing, amazing fragrant orchid if you're into fragrant orchids. Well, thank you very much for listening to this ramble about Dendrobium kingianum and its propensity to produce keikis. Now we know that's legit. Um, and what is legit is that I post every week on a Friday. So if you want to know what next week's adventure is, do hit subscribe and you will find out immediately when my video pings into the ether. But until then, plant lovers, look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.